Now let's get right into it, DC. Oh man, you finally finished talking about what we're gonna talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about it now. Here we go. Oh, okay, Nadamik and Sue, buddy. We know Nadamik and Sue opted between, uh, of course, the Saints, the Titans, and the Rams to head west right. to play for the Rams. One year, fourteen million dollars to anchor that defensive line along with Aaron Donald more like and Ram, Michael Brock. Man, I, it, it, that's just the defensive line. Post centers all over the league. It's going to be terrible. What's your thoughts on that? <sighs> that's my thoughts right there. You heard that? <sighs> Sound that's, like that's how everybody saw it. Yeah. yeah, every offensive line, all 32 offensive lines in the league was like, <sighs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's going to be magical, man, because you're going to have all this pressure. And then you got to think, they have three premier guys in the secondary. So I, I, their linebacking core ain't the greatest. Maybe they could show that up in the in the draft. But I would imagine seeing a lot of quick slants running on the round. <laughs> <laughs> wow! But I mean, but they saying they damn you to throw the ball now. They, they, that's, they that's are. The, but I mean, what, what's the other alternative? Like, are you really gonna be able to run it? Well, Sue is not a one trick pony. Yeah, this neither is, is Aaron tough. Donald. It's going to be tough, man. So, you got to – I mean, people were getting around it. You know, okay, well, Aaron Donald's there. We can run the other side. Uh, then they had trouble with Brockers. But, you know, okay, well, we can find a way between that. So, once you figure out how to get between them two, then now you got to worry about Sue, too. But, like I said, man, that's, that one Achilles heel on defense is the linebacking core. They don't have a very good – very strong linebacker core. Yeah, they, they might have that the best draft. linebacker. Yeah. So, yeah, Ogletree. That may give you a little breathing room. Tight right. ends all around the world will make a killing on the Rams. They still have Mark Barron there who plays uh, kind of that uh, linebacker yeah, he level. So he's pretty. Play, just, they're yeah. pretty big on some of the other little linebackers they got. Of course, they're going to have to find so no, out somebody to play nobody's in Nobody's proven. You're not going right. to place so, Ogletree pretty easy. Right, really so I don't know. You know, they're going to have to look at the whole via trade or draft. But this is the thing about Nadami Kasu that I want to say. He, he put together 51 and a half sacks from 2010 to 2017. Only by only trailing Geno Atkins for the most sacks by defensive tackle in that time frame. And I would say he's easily a better defensive tackle than Geno Atkins. Not no knock on Geno Atkins. He's good, but I mean, have we ever seen anything like Adam Kinsu? He's pretty much second coming of uh, what John Randall. But with the body, <laughs> yeah, he's like you know, I would say John Randall's a Hall of Famer. But then John Dominic Randall was the like first guy level, I right? remember getting sacks like that as a D tackle. Yeah, he, he had he had what we had with yeah. Leroy Glover. Yeah, and you had Norman Hand doing this thing. Yeah, but John and then Randall you had was, Nick Fairley was terror and was Sue. Terror. That was the next ones right. up. As far as getting the sacks, you had the Williams brothers and, and um, Kevin and the Vikings. And, uh, that was Pat, pretty right. good. Yeah, Kevin they weren't getting sacks like that. Yeah, it was just run stuff. Right, right. I ain't seen the sacks tally up. Until you seen Soup. Right. And Nick Ferry. True. And it really a lot of it was Soup. True. It's saying also that uh he recorded fifty five run stuffs the most by any interior defensive lineman. He also ranked seventh among all NFL players with twenty six batted passes and first among defensive linemen with six thousand seven hundred and seventy three snaps over eight years. So even though they say he take plays off, Wait, he's still many, in the how, top. How long he been? Well, you're talking about the snap count? Yeah. 6,773 snaps over the last eight seasons. All right, he's going to be all That's the, first he, among he defensive He's going to be all the injury when we play the Saints. We're going to be all right. All right, well, that's wishful <laughs> thinking. But that's anyway. Just for that one game, I don't want nothing bad to happen to him. But, it, that, but pretty much, that's that's uh, all our hopes was to imagine having Sue alone at defensive line with Sheldon Rankins and Cameron Jordan and Okafor. It wouldn't happen. It's not meant to be, people. So, uh, well, you know, we're going to keep on searching and keep moving. And and uh, we'll just be just have to kick the Rams' butts when we get an opportunity to play them. So uh, we're gonna anyway, we're gonna soon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the next Saints uh, item. We have we'll talk about a guy that's coming home back to New Orleans, and that is at the tight end position, Mister Benjamin Watson. Man, you saying back. his name wrong, man? How do you not say Benjamin Watson's name <laughs> right? I mean, it's Ben Watson. This is the curious case of Benjamin. What's Watson. curious about Ben Watson? Benjamin Watson, Benjamin Button, 37 years old. Come on, man. I thought you was riding with me on that one. Is he 34? I thought he was 37. Man, he's 37. He old as dirty. He defeat him for all the time, just like Benjamin Button. He hadn't played that much the last two years. He, of course, he had the injury in Baltimore. He played pretty He played, he Baltimore, played some right? games, I think a dozen games for... Um, with a bad Baltimore team. Yeah. So, 
Uh, well, they were. I can't say they were a pretty good team. They I can't sucked, say they you know that, man. Their offense sucked. I'll say that their defense was was top. In my opinion, they had probably the second best defense in the league last year. My opinion. Well, he led the Ravens. Uh, in, uh, let's see, he led the Ravens with sixty-one receptions, which he ranked had no receivers, <laughs> which ranked eight <laughs> among NFL tight ends. So Mike I Wallace mean, was still all something. they had outside of him, man, and they were pretty much. Plugging everybody at running back till they found that Collins kid. Now they got him on a one year deal. It's probably gonna be like the veteran minimum one year deal. Uh, what is this now? I think they're gonna give him a little more than a veteran minimum. Perhaps like maybe a little bit more. But he definitely looking at, wanted to come if, back. Now though. if Ben Watson, now you signing Ben Watson, you still have Kobe Fleener here. Okay, so the question mm-hmm. is now, what happens to Kobe Fleener and where do Ben Watson fit in the, uh, in the starting rotation? Does I'm a, he start I'm a, I'm or, does Joe, you, or does uh, Josh Hill start over ask, Ben I'm Watson? I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. You want to answer my question by asking me a question? Yeah, let's go. It's a pretty rhetorical question. <laughs> but let's go then. Have you ever seen a starter in the NFL get paid, what, by $11, $12 million and um, be on the bench? <laughs> Well, Ben Watson is not getting paid eleven million dollars to. I wasn't talking about Ben Watson. You're talking about Cole. I'm Flame. talking about your partner. <laughs> I'm at, so you saying you say that to say no? There's no way in hell I is, believe is he a June that they first can cut? keep. Is he among the June first cuts? They got to. Okay. If if you were gonna keep Kobe Fleener, then what you would do is you draft the guy, and you see how they're gonna pan out. And like, well, maybe you won't pan out. Okay, well, we'll just keep Kobe Fleener. All right. They. Signed Benjamin Watson before the draft even happened. <laughs> so right there, that lets me know Kobe Fleener out. Of, Kobe Fleener is out of here. They may still draft a young tight end because we only signed him for one year. Well, that's, that's we, we let him sit like we did with Jimmy Graham. We so does like so, that, so quick quick answer here. Does Ben Watson start over Josh Hill and uh, Harlem Allen Woody? Oh, uh, who man? Do eggs smell rotten when they sit out too long? I guess so. I don't know how to answer. All right, well, I guess so. Shit, I, I'm just asking the question. Hey, hey listen, this is another, another quick hey. item uh, quickly before we go to our break and get the music coming up. You didn't get the uh, metaphor, did you? I did. I did. If you keep him in the sun. We to set out for too long. Them eggs, they got rotten. All right. Gone. Also, the Saints did. They, they took a sniff at uh, wide receiver from the Bears, restricted free agent Cameron Meredith. Yeah, to come in, so the Saints still looking for wide receiver help behind our two main guys, and they signed Ben Willie Watson. Might be so going, man. and Willie Sneed, that's another. They got thing Ben we'll Watson about. from from the Ravens. So they quick, stole quick, Willie Sneed, maybe. Okay, so that's something we'll talk about Even on the other side of the break as well. We'll talk about Willie Sneed. We'll also give you our uh, picks on that draft at the, at the 27 spot. So we'll talk about that and other topics on the other side of the break. Stay with us. You're listening to the Sports Coma yeah. with Big Q and the guy. 